So let's talk about shell companies today, DJI shell companies. So if the US government bans DJI this December, it might sound like the end of an era, right? But here's the truth. DJI technology is not going away anytime soon. It's just going to change its name. In this video, I'm going to break down how DJI drones could keep landing on US shelves even after a ban and why it's almost impossible for regulators to stop it. Hi everyone, thanks for coming back to the channel. If you happen to be here for the very first time, my name is Russ and I make videos about drones, obviously here, 51 drones, but if you find anything interesting today or valuable, consider subscribing. Now this isn't about politics or picking sides. It's about understanding how global manufacturing really works and what that means for drone pilots here in the United States. So when people hear DJI ban, they picture like customs agents seizing drones at the border or stores pulling products overnight off the shelves, but that's really not how it works. So right now, DJI is facing potential restrictions under Section 232 of the Trade Expansion Act, the same process used in like steel and chip import cases and many other things. Now, if a ban happens this December, it would target DJI branded products and new FCC certifications for DJI devices. In other words, it would stop DJI the company, but it's not going to stop DJI technology. And that's important because DJI tech is already deep inside the global drone supply chain. Over the past year, we've seen a wave of new brands that look oddly familiar, right? You may have noticed a lot of press about them lately. Names like Sky Rover, Skyany, Cogito, Jovastar, and Ficas, Ficaxo. I don't even know how to say that one, but that's one of the most recent ones. I'll put links for those in the video description. But each of these companies appeared almost overnight, and their drones look nearly identical to current DJI models. Same design, same specifications, even the same app layout and startup sounds. Now, some hackers are should say security researchers have been proudly proclaiming that they caught DJI in the act of being sneaky by discovering firmware endpoints, app code paths, ODM overlap, and many more things. But the fact is my 11 year old can tell you right now, these are DJI drones just by looking at them. I mean, it's nearly identical. It's a different color, has a different label on it, but it's obviously a DJI drone. This one right here, it's basically a Mini 4 Pro with a different logo. The Cogito Specta Air, nearly a twin to the Air 3. And this is not a coincidence. It is a business model, one that uses licensing, OEM manufacturing, and software reuse to legally distribute the same technology under new names. Each of these companies has its own paperwork. They're registered in Hong Kong, California, Malaysia. They hold their own FCC IDs, trademarks, and business registrations, and nowhere in those documents does the name DJI appear. Even if they use DJI's code, DJI's chips, and DJI's flight logic, that doesn't automatically make them DJI. From a legal standpoint, they are separate entities. That means that US regulators can't just say, oh, DJI obviously owns this and then shut them down. They have to prove ownership or control on paper. Undeniable proof of record, meaning DJI holds at least 50% of the company or directs its operations. And unless there's a paper trail, like shareholder records or signed contracts, that proof doesn't exist. And it probably never will. Now, a lot of people assume that if two drones share the same app or the same firmware, it's proof that they're both DJI. But that's not how enforcement works. Regulators need documented corporate control, not just code similarities. Software overlap is circumstantial evidence, and it's not legal proof. And you know what I think? I think DJI knows that. I don't think they're even trying to be sneaky or try to slip one by regulators. Like, do you think one of the most advanced tech companies in the world is not going to realize or understand that it's going to be relatively easy for any hacker to discover connections? They understand how our government works, and they know that our legislators are bogged down by relentless red tape. To extend a ban, the government has to go through an investigative process, something that can take months or even years, as we've seen by how long it's take to actually get to where we are today when it comes to a ban. Each new brand that comes out has to be added individually to the entity list, the FCC cover list, 
or Section 232 restrictions. So while that process plays out, these new companies can continue manufacturing and continue selling perfectly legally. Even if DJI can't import products directly, its technology can still flow through OEM manufacturers, licensed partners, or third-party assemblers in other countries like Malaysia, Vietnam, Mexico, or even the United States. They can license DJI's designs, rebrand the hardware, load nearly identical firmware, and register a new FCC ID under a different name. By the time that drone hits a U.S. store shelf, it's technically not a DJI product, even if it flies, sounds, and feels exactly like one. Now, to actually stop this, U.S. agencies would have to move from company-based bans to product-based bans. And that means banning any drone that uses DJI technology, not just DJI branded ones. But that's much harder to enforce. It would require defining exactly what counts as DJI technology, proving that a product contains it, and passing new legislation or FCC rules to make it stick. And here's where things get pretty messy. False positives. When enforcement depends on code or component similarity, innocent companies could get caught in the crossfire. Many drone makers use the same Sony sensors, Amberella image processors, or open source flight control software. So if regulators build a detection system that flags DJI-like hardware or firmware, they could also end up blocking legitimate brands that simply use the same suppliers or standardized designs. A product-specific ban might sound pretty simple on paper, but in reality, it risks grounding drones that have absolutely nothing to do with DJI. That's why regulators would need a very careful, evidence-based approach, something that distinguishes shared technology from proprietary DJI code. Otherwise, they could punish innovation instead of protecting it. So what does this mean for you? The pilot, the content creator, the hobbyist, the commercial drone pilot. Even if DJI gets banned by name, you will still be able to buy drones that perform just like DJI models. They'll still come. They'll just have different branding, different packaging, and maybe a new logo. The technology is not going to vanish. It'll just flow through different channels and new companies, and they will just keep coming. It's a fascinating example of how innovation often moves faster than regulation. Now, whether you support or oppose a DJI ban, one thing is certain. This is not just about one company. It's about how difficult it is to regulate modern technology when it evolves faster than the law. As drone enthusiasts, the best thing that we can do is stay informed, we can buy responsibly, and we need to understand the forces that are shaping the industry that we love. Because no matter what happens in December, DJI's influence on the drone world is not disappearing anytime soon. So what are your thoughts? Do you support or do you oppose a DJI ban? Do you think it's going to be detrimental to the industry? Or do you think it's necessary to spark American innovation? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to visit with you guys. I love to see the discussion on this topic. It's very, very interesting. And it's something that I'm really passionate about. So let me know what you think. If you got any value from this video, click on that thumbs up button. I appreciate that. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Have a great day. And as always, fly safe and fly smart. You can call me Stu.